Welcome to Grace Abounds. I'm Pastor Jen Shaw, and in this podcast, I'm sharing my Sunday sermons from St. John's Lutheran Church, Palm Desert, California. I'm so grateful that you've joined us, and I trust that these words build you up in faith, hope, and love. I was seven years old when my family moved from Cedar Falls, Iowa to Fillmore, California. And one of the very first things my mom did was get her three girls swimming lessons. My sisters and I signed up for beginner, intermediate, and advanced classes, each of which were supposed to take three weeks. I don't remember how far my sisters got. They were only three and four years old at the time. But I went through all three classes in three weeks. I heard the phrase, like a duck to water, more than a few times. I don't recall if I'd ever been swimming before. But the moment I stepped into the pool, I loved it. Floating and having the water ripple all around me. I couldn't believe that something so fluid could support me. And pulling the water like a weight underneath me as I learned to freestyle and propel myself forward, splashing frantically, and diving down deep and coming up out of the waters like a rocket or a dolphin or something just set free. I was trying to come up with the word to express this experience as I was preparing this sermon for this Baptism of Our Lord Sunday. And so I googled a few words like swimming, waters, and up, and I found the word crest, which is the foamy top curl of a wave and also means to reach the highest point. And I learned something new, at least new to me, that the opposite of the crest of the wave is the trough, the low point in the cycle of the wave, the the bottom between the crests. Trough also means a point of low activity or achievement or satisfaction. How I felt the one time years ago when my brother-in-law tried to teach me how to surf. I did not have the upper body strength or the balance to stay on the surfboard, let alone propel it forward against the tide. My sister was laughing at me from her vantage point on the beach because apparently I was wildly swinging my arms and legs and moving ever so slightly backwards. I am, however, an excellent boogie boarder. Whether we are surfing or swimming or walking through the waters, in all the crests and troughs, the highs and lows of our life. The Lord is with us. The gospel truth declared in our scripture readings for today. This year, in our three-year lectionary reading cycle, we are going through the gospel of Luke. In this gospel, written by Luke, who also wrote the sequel, The Acts of the Apostles, Luke offers an orderly account of the life of Jesus Christ. And so Luke begins by telling the story of the birth of Jesus, the Christmas story we have celebrated over the past several weeks. Luke also recounts the birth of John the Baptist, relative of Jesus, son of Zechariah the priest and his wife Elizabeth, miraculously born to them in their old age, a prophet filled with the Holy Spirit and called to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. In our reading for today, Luke skips ahead some 30 or so years after the birth of Jesus and John the Baptist, introducing Jesus and John as adults. John the Baptist has gone out into the wilderness, to the desert in Judea, to the Jordan River, where he is dressed in camel's hair and eating 
wild honey and locusts and is baptizing people who are confessing their sins. It seems that what John was doing in the Jordan River is unique. The Old Testament makes no mention of baptism as we understand it today. There were daily personal water cleansing rites observed by the Jewish people, and Gentile converts would immerse themselves in water once to signify their conversion to Judaism. They still do today. But the practice of one person baptizing another person once, both Jew and Gentile, for the forgiveness of sins was apparently unique. John associated the holy act of baptism with a holy life that followed. And John's ministry was so powerful that some people began to wonder if he is the Messiah, the Christ, the Savior, which John firmly denies. As John says in our gospel reading for today, he baptizes with water, but the Messiah will baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. The Messiah is more powerful than John is. The Messiah has his winnowing fork in his hand and he will separate the wheat from the chaff. And with these and other exhortations, John preached the good news to the people. This might, sound, this might not sound like good news, if we hear these words as words of condemnation, as if some people are the wheat and some people are the chaff, as if some people are purely saints and other people are thoroughly sinners. But this is good news if we hear these prophetic words of John as truth. We are all saints and sinners none of us is righteous no not one we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of god and this is made clearly evident when the glory of god is revealed in the messiah who brings the refiner's fire and burns away everything in us that prevents us from shining with the light of the God in whose image we are made. The Messiah cleanses us from all unrighteousness and will one day bring sin to an end. The Messiah calls us to turn from that which is sinful, destructive, unloving, and turn to what is good and loving and gracious to turn to him, Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ, the Savior, who immersed himself in the waters of baptism as he immersed himself into our human existence. Jesus did not need to be baptized for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus chose to be baptized in solidarity with us. Though he is God, Jesus emptied himself and joined with us in our humanity. Though he was without sin, he stood among the sinners in the Jordan River. Though he was righteous, he embraced the unrighteous. Though he was their teacher, he washed the feet of his disciples. Though he was innocent, he died on the cross. Jesus Christ dove into the waters of our human suffering and death and rose again to life, bringing us with him into life now and forever, cresting the wave of our human existence, setting us free. Jesus Christ assures us, as the prophet Isaiah declares, that God is with us always and forever. 
The Lord who made us knows us and loves us. We belong to and with him. We are precious in his sight. As we walk through the fires of our life in this world, they will not consume us because God is with us. As we pass through the waters of our life in this world, they will not overwhelm us because God is with us. As we go through the most challenging circumstances of our life in this world, they will not destroy us because God is with us always and forever. In all the highs and lows, the peaks and the valleys, the crests and troughs, I learned something else in my Google word search. Trough also means a long, low, open container that holds food and drink for animals. In other words, a manger. As Jesus, the baby in the trough, the Savior on the cross, the risen Lord of all creation, emerges from the waters of baptism. The heavens are opened, and the Holy Spirit descends in bodily form like a dove, a symbol for peace from that time to this. And the voice of God the Father from heaven declares, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. Note that God the Father's delight in Jesus is not based on what Jesus has or hasn't done. This is the beginning of his public ministry, not the end. God's delight in Jesus is based in their relationship. You are my beloved child. With you I am well pleased. The baptism of Jesus highlights the relationship of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. One God, three persons who love and delight in each other always. God is an eternal divine relationship of love. Love is who God is. Love is how God is always in relationship with us. Picture someone you love deeply. That's a taste of how God feels about us. When we are baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we are immersed in this divine relationship of love. God says to us, you are my beloved child. With you, I am well pleased. Hear these words again from the Lord. You are my beloved child. With you, I am well pleased. This is our true and lasting identity. Beloved children of God. Baptism, like communion, is a message a means, an expression of God's grace. A sacrament from the Latin sacred mysterium, a holy mystery through which God showers us with love. Martin Luther understood baptism in these terms. He defined baptism as water and the word, the physical, tangible, life-giving element of water and the promise, the assurance, the life-giving word of God that we are saved. And so Luther said, when our sin or conscience oppress us, we can take strength and comfort in saying, I am baptized. And by the way, if you're not baptized and you would like to be, I invite you to send me an email right now to Pastor at stjohnslutheran.church, and we'll take care of that. Beloved, 
since God loves us so much, we ought also to love one another. The baptism of Jesus is the beginning of his public ministry. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, assured of God's love, Jesus went out into his community and shared God's love with others. He healed the sick and fed the hungry and provided for those in need and taught the word of God and set the example for us. Baptized in Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit, assured of God's love, we too are to go out and care for the sick and feed the hungry and provide for those who are in need and share the good news of life and salvation in Jesus Christ with all the people in our life. We are to fulfill the promise of our baptism to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. As we ride the waves of this life, in all the crests and in all the troughs. May we remember that Jesus is with us in the waters. May we know the promise of our baptism. We are saved. We are loved. We are never alone. May we follow the example of Christ our Savior and be open to the healing work of the Holy Spirit and overflow with the love of God. Amen. Thanks for listening. We're doing this every week, so make sure to subscribe. If you'd like more information about St. John's mission to know Christ and make Christ known, visit our website, stjohnslutheran.church. May God bless you on this day and in all the days ahead.